<sighs> Real you Ooh, nope. Uh hang on, wait, forget you saw anything. <clears throat> Real YouTubist, remember their intro? I also know why I was getting confused. Okay. If I'm gonna clap, I have to make sure I do it directly into the mic or else you won't really hear it because I have a new nice mic. Well, it's not that new, I've had it for a couple months now, but uh, it only picks up sound directly in front of it. Anyway, hello. Uh, breathing is kind of overrated in my opinion. I can just talk for as long as I want without even taking a breath, uh, but that's probably not advised. So. I almost uploaded a video today where I didn't even record any content like it wasn't even Pokemon themed I just like had a really good bagel yesterday and I wanted to talk about it And so I thought about in the spirit of my old uh, extended intros just just <laughs> posting a video That's just me talking about uh, my recent development in bagel lore, but I decided that I was actually going to talk about something Pokemon related so Today we're going to be talking about far giraffe now you might be wondering why far giraffe in particular uh, there's a couple reasons to that. Number one, of the new Pokemon revealed, it is the most interesting to me, and it's also one of the newest, po like, the Pokemon that we have the most to go off of. For a Pokemon like, I don't know, Satitan, which is a new fully evolved Pokemon, we don't have any kind of reference for its stats, right? And the stats, and, and move pool. And those end up being really important determining factors in how good a Pokemon is. But for Far Drive, we have a lower bound. We know that it's not going to get on the whole worse than its pre-evolution we also have a decent idea of some of its move pool because again we have giraffe egg and if you look at the new pokemon they revealed so far most of them we don't have a lot to go off of we have like wiglet which is a pre-evolution um so we can't say that much about it we have the starters we have the, the legendary pokemon but those are new we have no baseline reference we have like paldean whooper which you know it, paldean forms the like where the stats mat go matter a lot and we don't know anything about paldean quagsire we don't even know its types confirmed so um, in terms of the Pokemon that we actually can talk about, and there's been a couple new reveals, like Cyclozar, for example, looks really cool, has a really neat move. Might make a video about that move at some point in the future, but um, as of right now, at least I don't really feel like I have a lot to go off of. But but the exception to all of this is Far Giraffe. So if you will excuse me, we're gonna switch to um which one is it? Stream watching? Yeah, this screen. Gonna... Oh, do a little movie magic there, because editing is for a coward. So Let's talk about Far Giraffe, because I think it's a really interesting Pokemon for a couple of reasons. Let's zoom in here so you all can see better. Far Giraffe, um, <clears throat> Paldean, Giraffe Rig living in the Paldea region will evolve into this Pokemon. Long neck, whatever. Here's the first interesting thing. So it's normal and psychic type. Now, normal and psychic might not seem like a super exciting type to a lot of people because normal doesn't hit anything for super effective, but it's actually quite good typing. So we've had a couple really good normal psychic types um, over the years. The most recent one being in dd now basically psychic is only weak, weak to ghost dark and bug those are the three weaknesses of psychic and by being normal type you lose your ghost weakness and you not only turn that into a not not even a neutral hit but an immunity so ghost type pokemon that are you know normally used to counter psychic types don't work against normal psychic and on the flip side the fighting weakness of normal normal's only weakness ends up going and turning into a, a neutral hit because psychic resists it and obviously against fighting type pokemon psychic is normally pretty good so for that reason, normal and psychic is a really good defensive pairing, and it's actually not a terrible offensive pairing either. Like the dark and psychic types that psychic really struggles hitting, normal can hit for neutral damage. Normal overall is just a good type at hitting things for neutral. Um, and having like, yeah, basically just like having an additional stab option is really, really nice, especially when you consider that normal or that, you know, in, in these games, terrestrialization is also an option for additional coverage or to boost up one of your uh, existing types. There's also some good offensive normal moves like Hyper Voice. Um, Hyper Beam and Giga Impact were, were pretty decent because of Dynamax. I don't think that they'll be as good here, but regardless, Psychic Normal is actually pretty good defensive typing. I mentioned Ndidi. I think Oranguru is also um, pretty like worth mentioning here where Oranguru was never amazing, but in 2017, when the power level was overall lower, Oranguru was actually a pretty decent niche option. Uh, it's surprisingly bulky and difficult to remove and it has the signature move Instruct. Um, and so for that reason, it was a pretty good, decent, I would say it was a pretty decent trick room setter. It was a little gimmicky, but if you got it going, it could just destroy teams. And, and again, it has that typing as well. So like I said, the, the first thing is that the typing is actually quite good. And we know this confirmed normal psychic. Not only that, but it actually has two really interesting abilities, which is Cud Chew uh, and Armor Tail. So um, this is just background. This is just like Pokedex stuff, but the two abilities I think are worth mentioning here. So Kudchu is a new ability appearing for the first time in these titles. When a Pokemon with this ability eats a berry, it will eat it one more time at the end of the next turn. So this is kind of like a worst harvest in my opinion, or it really depends on the stats because on an offensive Pokemon having a harvest. So sorry, I should explain. 
The way that Harvest works is that if a Pokemon consumes a berry during its turn, at the end of each turn, it has a 50% chance of finding that berry again. And so you can sometimes eat two, like if let's say I have like 20% left, I eat a citrus berry, end of that same turn, Harvest activates, eat another citrus berry, I get two berries in one turn, can get 50% HP recovery guaranteed. Um, that, the thing is that Harvest can work as many times as, it can last forever. Harvest Harvest doesn't have an upper limit, whereas Kudchu only activates one time unless you give it another berry, which is probably going to be more gimmicky than it's worth most of the time. Depends on the stats, right? Um, so it's a little bit more gimmick, less consistent. I would less, it has less of an upward bound than Harvest. Harvest, again, can activate two times in one turn. It can be really useful. Kudchu will only ever activate once. The thing is, though, that Kudju will always activate on the second turn, whereas Harvest, because it only has a 50% chance unless Sun is up, um, Harvest will only... You could you could get really messed up by Harvest and have it never activate uh, twice. In theory, you could just never hit it. So I think you trade some of the power of Harvest for some of the guarantee and the safety of Kudju. Now, they're actually showing off my first... Hit the wrong button. Um, they're showing off my first instinct when it comes to Kudju here in these screenshots with the Citrus Berry. So... Citrus Berry, it heals 25% of your of your maximum health total um, at the end, at, once you drop below 50%. So you drop 50% or lower, and if you're not knocked out, you immediately heal 25% of that up. Um, with this ability, you that turns into another, you get another 25% chance, 25% uh, recovery at the end of the next turn. So um, that can make be really useful. What it means is that if your Pokemon, let's say your Far Giraffe falls to 50% health, and it doesn't take damage, like from then on, like to the next turn, you have, uh, you go all the way back to full HP. Now, this kind of 50% HP recovery berry is very, very powerful. It was, it's so powerful, in fact, that in Generation 7, um, they buffed the, we call them pinch berries, the Figgy, um, Ayapapa, uh, Wiki, Aguav, Mago berries, and they, they, uh, made them, they used to heal, I think, I don't remember how much they used to heal, but now they, 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 in Gen 7, they made them heal 50%, and they became arguably the best item in the game um, for generation seven, and they've since nerfed them to, I think, 33% health, uh, going into generation eight because they were too powerful. So basically, this lets you turn a citrus berry into how broken the old Fiwam, those pinch berries were, but, uh, even stronger because you get not only the 50% health recovery, but you also get to activate it at 50% health with a, with a citrus berry versus 25% health where they used to activate. Sorry, that might have been a little bit too technical. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's that's how I feel about this berry, this ability. I think citrus berry is going to be far and away the best use of it because uh, it's the most consistent. But you can do obviously some niche stuff. Like I'm sure for players who play like single battles, you can do like substitute plus. I think it's Piapa berry, which heals, raises your special attack one stage when you get to 25% health. So there's that option. You have Salic berry, some of the other pinch berries. I'm sure there's also some other um, niche stuff as well. But in my opinion, citrus citrus berry is going to be the by far and away the best item to use with this ability, and it's quite useful depending on the stats assuming that this thing is decently bulky or like has some moderate bulk i think basically this allows far you can you, it's basically having an ability that says give far giraffe 50 percent more health um which is quite useful and of course it's slightly worse than that because you can get one shot you can get ko'd from without activating your barrier you can get ko'd um and not have your berry activate like on the second at the end of the second turn but in most cases you're gonna be able to eat i think both of the both of the berry uh turns and so therefore having 150 percent health is actually a pretty big deal the other ability, Armor Tail. This is an ability that is technically new because it's named differently, but it's the same as Queenly Majesty or Dazzling, which are already existing abilities, both added in Generation 7. That says no priority moves can be used against your team um, while this Pokemon is on the field. This is a phenomenal ability. It's not typically distributed to Pokemon with like super amazing stats. Like Bruxish isn't super good. Sorin has been okay at certain formats. Like it's definitely done well before. Um, but it, it, this is a super solid utility ability. Like, let's say you want to use Focus Sash or Life Orb or Choice Specs. This ability, having a secondary ability, which says, hey, this Pokemon can be used even without um, a berry, is super useful. Like, this is just a great ability to have. Shutting down Fake Out, Mock Punch, Aqua Jet, Sucker Punch, Bullet Punch, all these priority moves. There's so many extreme speed, right? Um, I think will be very, very, very valuable. And it's you're never going to be upset to have this on your team. It's just an extra dimension of control. So, basically, what I'm saying is that Far Giraffe has great typing. Normal Psychic is really, especially for a Psychic type, I would argue that Normal is one of the better uh, secondary types that you can have. It's not, you could you can make cases for other types. Steel is obviously good. Psychic is probably pretty decent. But I think in terms of, it's up there. It's got to be top five secondary types for Psychic. And it has two really interesting abilities that let it play into a more survivability build and also don't like, take away from its offensive um, capabilities either because you have an ability that's just great to have overall. It's not going to be necessarily boosting it, but... Uh, it's just such a good ability to have and really, really allows you to do some 
it allows you to put yourself in, in more situations where you have more control, which is just always useful. Last thing I want to talk about is let's just talk about Giraffe Rig because we have, again, a baseline for how this Pokemon's stats are. The stats are the most important thing, so let's start with them. 70 HP, totally respectable. 80 attack, not great. Not a physical attacker. Pretty low defenses, I would say. Um, 90 special attack is fine. Like, it's not good. Giraffe Rig is obviously not a good Pokemon, but, like, if we look at kind of the where these, excuse me, stats are distributed, we see that it's more special attack than attack. Decently okay HP, and then, like, middling defense i would say middling lower defenses right and then a middling like a lower to middling speed stat i think that if either far giraffe gets a good bit bulkier and has like a slight let's say it gets like 10 to 20 more hp and then like i don't know like 30 in the defenses that would be very very good for it or if it gets like a lot of special attack and speed because its base hp is not terrible it's still like probably doesn't need the focus ash um and it could actually be a pretty decent special attacker as well so i think these stats have set it up for success assuming that it gets a meaningful increase and in that it's able to specialize in something again either special attack and speed or increasing the bulk i'm guessing special attack and speed will be raised because yeah um more brain power is special attack is normally thought of as like a, a brain power thing um last thing we'll do is we'll just take a look at the moves here uh, i'm not sure we're going to see anything too uh surprising here we have baton pass nasty plot psychic is obviously a standard um nasty plot calm mind these are the standard boosting moves for special attackers um and they're both pretty decent. I think that like if Far Giraffe is fast enough, then Calm Mind and Nasty Plot can both be good. So Calm Mind plus Citrus Berry plus um what is it called? Kudchu or is also a very interesting combination to me because you just have so much more health, especially if Far Giraffe is faster than the most Pokemon. So I think that actually is really interesting. Um, you get Light Screen. I assume you get Reflect as well. Not seeing it. Thunderbolt for coverage. That's really that's like very very interesting. Shadow Ball. Um, Reflect. Yep. Energy Ball. Charge Beam. Skill Swap is interesting. Probably not gonna have a ton of use um is my gut instinct but you can never be sure nasty plot recycles quite interesting if recycle comes back recycle plus kudju could be interesting um yeah that could definitely be good thunder wave grass knot trick room is is, is also really interesting i mean trick room setters in general are, are good um it really depends on the stats but since giraffe rig i think has some potential to become more bulky um then uh, having it as like a trick room option especially with the, all this health could actually be really interesting so trick room is definitely good and then egg moves Future Sight, Beat Up, Wish is interesting. Probably not super necessary here. Um, I wouldn't say anything. No, nothing's jumping out, out of me in terms of the egg moves here, aside from like Beat Up, which is sometimes used with Justified Pokemon, especially in the early meta game. So basically, from what we can tell so far, um, I think that Far Giraffe is looking like it could be a genuinely good Pokemon. And, and of course, it's way too soon to tell. We don't know anything about the stats, the move pool, for sure. But based on what I've, what I've seen so far, I think that there's a pretty good chance that this Pokemon is legitimately like uh, not only usable, but could actually be good. Really, it really wants special attack and speed. It wants to make sure it has a decent move pool. But based on what we're seeing so far, I think it's a really exciting Pokemon. And I think that it could definitely perform well. So that's what I have to say about that. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about Far Giraffe in the comments. And let me know how you're enjoying this second channel, fifth channel, um, whichever one you want to think about it. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Subscribe to Bonus Wolf. Bye-bye.